morning, dear friends, as we have come to Good Friday and offer ourselves having celebrated the night of all nights when Jesus would offer himself in the Eucharist at the Last Supper, what continues today or what is completed today is what we are praying and becoming one with at this moment being one with the cross of Jesus, the crucified Jesus. Let us offer ourselves, let us pray for the Lord's mercy, the Lord's grace. As we all kneel and we pray, we worship and adore you, Christ our King. We worship and adore king is given a throne a king is given a crown a king is given a scepter a king is given royal robes here our king on the throne of the cross with a crown of thorns the scepter of nails, the robe of blood. It is the crucified Savior we look at. It is the crucified Savior we adore. Christ our King, we pray. We worship and Acknowledging him as king is enthroning him within our hearts where no one else reigns there, where it is only Jesus who reigns. It is only the Lord who has total authority. When we look at the cross that Jesus carried for us, and his death on the cross, the suffering he went through, and the shame they put him through. And it is this Jesus that we enthrone within our hearts. The cross doesn't seem like a throne worthy of a king, 
but in our hearts we can give a throne worthy of a king today we have to make that decision am i ready to give that throne to jesus am i ready to give my heart to jesus when i say that i worship christ as king king of my heart the king of my life if till today i have been seated on the throne of my own heart the throne of my own life my little kingdom today i abdicate that throne i step down from that throne and i enthrone the rightful king of my life christ my king it is he who i worship we worship and adore you we worship and adore you christ our king christ our king we worship you Jesus we glorify you father for sending your beloved son amongst us we praise you and we adore you for sacrificing your beloved son for our sake we adore you we glorify your beloved son for having offered yourself to us we thank you and we praise you O oh, beloved son for taking up the humiliation of the cross we praise you and we adore you o holy spirit for being with jesus in this wilderness of the cross being with the lord for that grace to flow into us for the anointing to be upon us we thank you we praise you we adore you for this moment of the cross we glorify you for this moment of the cross we adore you o jesus we praise you o jesus we exalt you o jesus enthroned within our hearts glorified in our hearts we adore you and we praise you we worship and we adore you Christ our king we worship and adore you Christ our king Christ our king we Christ our King. 
feel his presence. His presence within our heart. Where he is to be exalted and highly glorified with all honor. On this earth, we gave him a throne of the cross. In our heart, give him the throne of our life. I have been saved because of my Lord. to glorify my Jesus from this beautiful cross for this beautiful cross to the world it is two logs of wood and it is shame to me it is life I have life because of this what my Lord took up on the cross I will hold on to this cross of Jesus I will celebrate this cross of Jesus as it is a reminder to me how much I'm loved by the Father by the Son by the Holy Spirit. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I
I will cling, good Jesus, to this cross that makes no meaning to the world. As St. Paul says, it is foolishness to the world. To me, it is everything. To me, it is everything. What my Jesus did for me on the cross, to me, it is everything. It is my life. To the world, it might seem foolishness, but to that same world, I will proclaim the love of the cross. They can think what they want about me. They can think I'm foolish to follow the God of the cross. And yet, I know what it means to me. I know what it means for my life. And to the whole world, I will pray and I will proclaim the love of the cross I will cherish. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will One day, we will exchange this for the crown of eternal life. I will celebrate this and I will cherish it. Bring our whole family at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Place them there. This is the most secure place you can put your family. At the foot of the cross of Jesus. Mother, you were always there with Jesus. You saw those glorious moments. But at the most decisive moment, you knew where to be at the foot of the cross. Teach us, remind us to always be at the foot of the cross. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us be seated. Our brothers, our sisters, testify for the glory of God. Lorraine from the U.S., I've been following DRCC since October 2023 during the retreat on January 19th. Father mentioned that there is a child who is going through a speech delay, that the Lord is touching and healing this child. I quickly claimed it for my son who is going through this delay and with faith 
my child has been healed he said his first words clearly just a few days after that message was given i praise and thank jesus for his healing mercies praise you jesus thank you jesus rufina rodriguez from rodriguez from pune i have been attending the drcc colombo retreats since july 2023 on the 4th of march my brother in law developed numbness in both his legs below the knees he was unable to stand on his feet and we were all worried for him my sister immediately rushed him to the hospital the doctors got some tests done and it was diagnosed that his sugar levels had increased tremendously due to which there was numbness in his legs they started with the treatment and he was kept under observation for one day i attended the drc retreat on the 5th of march and kept praying continuously in front of the blessed sacrament asking the lord to heal him and bring life into his legs so that he could stand up on his legs once again i kept praying for him throughout the day calling out the name of jesus the next morning we got the news that he was able to get up and move around slowly i thank the lord for his immense graces and blessings upon my brother in law and his family i also kept praying for my sister asking the lord to give us strength and courage in this time of difficulty the next day father mentioned her name and said philo the lord accepts your sacrifice of prayer and he blesses it i thank the lord for making my family spiritually stronger with these retreats and making us understand the importance of the holy eucharist thank you jesus praise you jesus cynthia from malaysia testifies i've been following the adoration and reflection sessions daily and every day i learn something new although i follow these sessions on my own i have the tv volume high because i believe and i want god's spirit to surround me my house and my family members with this belief what i have seen is one of my siblings is attending weekday masses although not regular but has started to read the bible regularly which to me is a great miracle the second blessing that i've received is that i got a job from the company that i had resigned one year ago i was offered the same position with the same salary without having to go through a probation period i thank and j- praise jesus for having intervened in my life thank you jesus praise, praise you jesus. jesus dear brothers and sisters we praise and thank god for all his miracles and his blessings we praise god by testifying for what jesus has done for us so as you have experienced that touch of the lord during these retreats please do send in your testimonies to us at testimonies.drcc@gmail.com <coughs> we have been praying during these days on the last seven sayings of jesus as our holy week retreat offering ourselves into the presence of the lord today we pray the sixth saying of jesus on the cross it is finished we read in the gospel of john chapter 19 verse 28 onwards after this when jesus knew that all was now finished he said in order to fulfill the scripture i'm thirsty a jar full of sour wine was standing there so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth when jesus had received the wine he said it is finished he said it is finished all is now 
over. We are on Good Friday. We finished. For most of us, we have finished, uh, nearly all of us, we would have finished our um, Monty Thursday services, the Holy Thursday service. Once that is done, everywhere the cross of Jesus and all the statues are veiled. Here you can see that I have not veiled the statue. We will do it in just a moment. But a reminder to us, just a visual reminder to us of what Jesus says when everything is done to fulfill the scripture. And then he says, it is finished. All is now over. It is finished. For a moment, just look at the cross and then we will wail the crucified Jesus. Even as we wailed the Lord, let the imprint of the crucified Jesus remain in our minds. It is finished. All is now over. When I remember we when we celebrate um, when we celebrate this day of the passion and we offer ourselves when we hear the words it is finished what is the emotion that comes into our heart because it is a contrasting emotion it is finished in one way is meant to be celebrated because we have now received salvation. So it's a celebration of all mankind. We are meant to celebrate a great victory. But then the humiliation, the suffering, and the mockery of Jesus ultimately leading to the death of the Son of God. What emotion should that instill in us but for Jesus at that moment to say it is finished completed I remember when we had the inauguration of our retreat center in Sydney in Summersby it was after three and a half years of looking for a place and hunting for a place in the midst of all the anxieties of not having any financial backing, of not knowing many things in a strange land, being in a rural property, initially all by myself, and then afterwards Father Joby would join. But on the day of the, of the inauguration of the new place where we, where it, it was now our own retreat center. I was giving the Thanksgiving speech. And I remember during that time, um, for those who were there around would remember as well, I got pretty emotional. And during the speech, I was weeping as I was thanking different people for it. And very often I think back why I got so emotional. It's not something that generally happens with me. But that day as I thanked each person, I was, I, was, uh, I was literally crying. 
and uh, I know Archbishop Peter Cominsoli was was there and uh, he stood up to to comfort me but why that emotion I believe that emotion came from the three and a half years of all that I went through having gone from the retreat center in India where I was covered with a wonderful priests and and so much of st uh, support structure and everything that was there to a place that had nothing and a future that was uncertain and every day for me was a struggle especially the time when I was alone and no one was there and I would I would look um, at the computer screen for hours and hours just searching for a place where we could start our retreat center. We were at, at that time, we were leasing a place from the diocese. And so I would just look up real estate properties. We didn't even have a decent internet connection. So if I clicked something, I had to wait for a long time for it to even upload, for the screen to upload, because I had to see photographs of these places in the real estate websites. And after looking at that, I would then take the car and I'd, I'd make my way to these places. I couldn't even enter inside. I would stand at the gate. I would look at the surroundings. Honestly, it was a pretty foolish way of looking for places. Not, not the wisest of things to do. But I did that for nearly two years. And um, even after Father Joby came, after two years, I think uh, a few times we did that, but by the time we had started to understand. And there was no financial support. There was no support structure. Had a wonderful set of, of volunteers uh, and team members who were really supportive. But apart from that, usually they go back home and then it is all just by myself. And after the three years and after getting a fulfillment of the dream of that retreat center. I think on the day when I gave that speech on the inauguration, I broke down is more of all those emotions of three years coming out together. Is it a day to celebrate? Yes, it was a day to celebrate. Everyone was happy. I think deep within me, I was just mentally and emotionally exhausted. And that is what came out on that day. When you have, in many, many of our stories end up like this, you invest so much of yourself. And maybe there is a victory for everyone else when they celebrate the ultimate, when you have achieved what you set out to do. For everyone else, it seems like a great celebration. But for the person who gave and gave, they feel spent, totally empty. Jesus, all through, he gave and gave. So when we look at the crucified Jesus and when we hear the words, it is finished, it seems like a great moment of celebration because our salvation has been attained. But at the same time, we look at Jesus, the crucified Lord in pain and agony and uttering those words, it is finished. All is now over. One of the words that is used in certain translation is, all is now consummated. It is finished is a more popular translation. In certain translations it gives, all is now consummated. This is from the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, the Yonine jo Gospel, has an emphasis on the R. The Lucan Gospel has an emphasis on the way. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem. The Yonine Gospel concentrates on the R. That is why we would see multiple times references to the R 
in John chapter 2 and that is one of the most popular ones at the wedding at Cana when the blessed mother comes to Jesus and tells them they have no wine mind you wine is a very um uh, it, the 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 indications of wine and reference to the wine is always very very symbolic over there so when the blessed mother says they have no wine his response in john 2 4 is woman my hour has not yet come there's references to the hour multiple times in john chapter 12 verse 23 onwards john chapter 12 verse 23 and then 27 and 28 john 12 verse 23 it says very truly very truly i say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains just a single grain but if it dies it will bear much fruit and then in verse 27 now my soul is troubled and what should i say father save me from this hour no it is for this reason that i have come to this hour father glorify your name it is for this reason that I've come to this hour, that sacred hour. And so the Yonine Gospel gives a very strong emphasis on the hour of Jesus' passion, the hour of his death. That is why we would read in John 5, verse 25 and 28. John 5, verse 25 and 28 very truly i tell you the hour is coming and now is here when the dead will hear the voice of the son of god and those who hear will live and again in verse 28 do not be astonished at this for the hour is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come out so Jesus' whole emphasis on that hour. What is to take place in that hour? Remember, Jesus is very clear when the Lord says, no one can force the time I will choose. In John chapter 10, in John chapter 10, he says, John chapter 10, verse 18, no one takes it from me. He's talking about his life. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down on my own accord. I have power to lay down and I have power to take it up. So I will decide the hour. The hour has come. It is not the Pharisees, it is not the Roman soldiers who decided the hour. Jesus says, I decided the hour. According to whose plan? I decide the hour according to the will of the Father. So whatever is happening in the hour is happening according to the will of the Father. That is what Jesus says in John chapter, John chapter 5, verse 19. Very truly I tell you, the Son of Man can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. The Father's will is what the Son of Man desires. John chapter 5, verse 30. I do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of he who sent me. Everything is about the will of the Father. John chapter 5, verse 36. John 5, verse 36. I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I'm doing, testify on my behalf. 
the father has given me a work to complete that is what is taking place in the hour the father's will we read in john 6:38 for i have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me this is the will of him who sent me so what is the will of the father he goes on to say this is the will of him who sent me that i should lose nothing of all that he has given me and i should raise it all up on the last day that i should lose no one the will of the father is the consummation of the relationship between god and man the will of the father and what jesus came to complete is the consummation of the relationship between the between god and mankind remember the fall when adam and eve committed that sin and they fell it was a rejection of god and an attachment to sin god was rejected sin was accepted and from then there has been the desire of the father that there will be a consummation of the relationship the consummation so often in the scriptures the consummation is a reference to marriage intimacy of marriage no wonder jesus says in mark 10:9 they are no longer two they are meant to be one they are no longer two they are one it is consummated that is why even in the church a marriage is considered invalid if the marriage has not been consummated consummation in the marriage we know what consummation is when they are no longer two there is a oneness that is taken place even physically that oneness takes place consummation becomes essential in the marriage so what is the will of the father the will of the father is the consummation of the relationship between god and mankind so jesus on the cross now utters those sacred words and says all is now consummated it is now consummated it is finished it is consummated the oneness between god and mankind has taken place on the cross satan and sin has been defeated everything is complete so when i look at the cross i remember and i need to remember on this day all of us will be in church we'll be at the stations of the cross we will be at the passion of jesus and today you need to remind yourself we need to remind ourselves when we see jesus on the cross there is a celebration in the death of jesus a celebration of my consummation of my marital union a consummation of my relationship with my lord i'm becoming one with no wonder jesus says in john 12:32 when i will be lifted up from heaven when i will be lifted up from the earth i will draw all people to myself it will now all be consummated so today on good friday when you pray when you go and have the the um yeah you you adore the cross of jesus when you have the veneration of the cross and you go and kiss that cross remember the consummation that has taken place remember the intimacy as as the church says about marriage once a marriage is consummated now it is forever it is forever our marriage has been consummated 
the Father and me are now one. As Jesus says, the Father and me will come and make our home with you. Such intimacy, deep intimacy, that is what I need to celebrate, even though I'm looking at Jesus dead on the cross. I need to celebrate this. I need to cherish this, the consummation of my relationship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit. And I need to treasure that. If I'm going through Good Friday without any emotion in me about my consummation of this relationship, then maybe I need to open my eyes and open my heart. Where is my heart? Am I still an Adam? Am I still an Eve at the Garden of Eden, busy working out a relationship with the serpent and the forbidden fruit? Or will I open my eyes see the crucified Jesus and experience the consummation of love on the cross. Let us kneel. It is finished. His blood poured down from that cross. The pain he went through, the scourging, his skin hanging from his body, the flesh torn. Blood covers his body. What a great act of love to consummate, to consummate a deep oneness, a celebration to consummate. That precious blood of his is washing every drop as it falls from his body, is washing in preparation. The bridegroom is washing the bride for consummation of the relationship. His blood is cleansing, purifying, to celebrate the consummation. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in Lord Jesus, your blood cleanses. Your blood cleanses so that there will be a consummation. Your words, it is finished, is a completion. The Father's will has been completed. The consummation has taken place. It is a celebration 
but lord we look at you on the cross and your pain and agony on the cross and we ask ourselves how can we celebrate but lord that is exactly what you're telling us celebrate the consummation celebrate the oneness this is what i came to do celebrate the victory celebrate the bridegroom and the bride are now one celebrate with my precious blood that is cleansed that is purified it's your blood it's your blood that cleanses me it's your blood that gives me life it's your blood that took my place it ready makes sacrifice washes me precious sacrifice was offered the ransom has been paid freedom has been got and in freedom the relationship is consummated have life because you gave it up as long as a seed falls to the ground and dies it will not sprout and bear fruit here the seed of all seeds fell to the ground and died so that there will be fruit from there comes the fruit of consummation of this relationship the bridegroom and the bride and now one i'm complete by this cross i'm made complete by this cross i will celebrate it i will cherish it as i hold on to it desire that union with Jesus on the cross desire the consummation of the bridegroom and the bride on the cross this is where i made complete where i made whole at the foot of the cross at the foot of the cross where grace and suffering be you have shown me your love through the judgment you
we offer ourselves we thirst we desire offering our heart to the lord being there at the foot of the cross and telling jesus at the foot of the cross lord jesus where grace and suffering meet where there is consummation consummation of a relationship i thank you o oh lord my bridegroom i thank you for the sacrifice that was offered so that i will be complete because i'm consummated in you that is where my completion comes my completion does not come from the world my completion does not come from worldly relationships my completion does not come from career success my completion does not come from what i've achieved in life my completion comes at the foot of the cross where grace and suffering has met at the foot of the cross where grace and suffering me show me your love to the judgment you receive and you won my heart and you won my heart trade these ashes and for beauty his mercy flows where his grace flows today is the first day of the divine mercy novena the lord says bring to me all mankind especially all sinners and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy In this way you will console me in the bitter grief into which the loss of souls plunges me Most merciful Jesus whose very nature it is to have compassion on us and to forgive us do not look upon our sins but upon our trust which we place in your infinite goodness receive us all into the abode of your most compassionate heart and never let us escape from it we beg this of you by your love which unites you to the father and the holy spirit eternal father turn your merciful gaze upon all mankind especially upon poor sinners all enfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus for the sake of his sorrowful passion show us your mercy that we may praise the omnipotence of your mercy forever and ever amen 
Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. At this moment, remember all priests. This whole month, we prayed for the priests. These days, your priests are ministering to you continuously. Pray for them. Pray for their protection. Pray for priests by St. Therese of Calcutta. Mary, Mother of Jesus, throw your mantle of purity over our priests. Protect them, guide them, and keep them in your heart. Be a mother to them, especially in times of discouragement and loneliness. Love them and keep them belonging completely to Jesus. Like Jesus, they too are your sons. So keep their hearts pure and chaste. Keep their minds filled with Jesus and put Jesus always on their lips. So that he is the one they offer to sinners and to all they meet. Mary, Mother of Jesus, be their mother, loving them and bringing them joy. Take special care of sick and dying priests and the ones most tempted. Remember how they spend their youth and old age, their entire lives serving and giving all to Jesus. Mary, bless them and keep a special place for them in your heart. Give them a piece of your heart, so beautiful and pure and immaculate, so full of love and humility, so that they too can grow in the likeness of Christ. Dear Mary, make them humble like you and holy like Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we receive the blessing of the cross, Remind ourselves it is Good Friday. We wail the statue of Jesus till it is exposed at the Passion. Ask the Lord to bless all your intentions, especially that for your family, the sacredness and holiness of your family. As we pray down in adoration. Adoring our Lord. Down in adoration falling, low the sacred horse we hail. Ni 
Mother, pray for all of us as we will go through Good Friday, remembering the passion of your Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So dear friends, like we announced before, we will not be having any live streaming of the Passion Service. Uh, tomorrow morning, 6.30, we will have the final saying of Jesus as the final day of our retreat. On Sunday morning, 6.30, we'll have the, the adoration and we'll have um, the online Sunday um, Easter Mass as well. Um, especially for those who are homebound. The others we know, you will go to church. But for those who are homebound, we will have that online Mass on Sunday morning. So please do prepare ourselves and keep ourselves in prayer during this day. God bless you. Have a blessed Good Friday.